Wirecast. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, uh, for this Sabbath day that you've given us. Once again, we need to remind ourselves that you are the one in control. We can forget about the cares of our uh, work week and uh, just, just uh, remember to rely on you and uh, to take this 24 hours to uh, rest and uh, have fellowship with one another. We pray, Father, that your spirit lead us as we go through Numbers and also the book of Acts. This, is this we pray as your humble servant. So, amen. Okay. Anything new? I don't think so. Glad y'all came on this rainy evening. <clears throat> we are on Numbers chapter 13. The first two verses, then Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, send out for yourself men so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. This is a demonstration. So Elohim says cast. to send these guys out. Uh, it was a request from the people though. In Deuteronomy 1, starting at verse 22, we read, See, Yahweh your Elohim has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession, as Yahweh the Elohim of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you approached me and said, Let us send men before us, that they may search out the land for us and bring, it, bring back to us word of the way by which we should go up in the cities which we shall this enter. Is a demonstration and the thing pleased me, and I took twelve of your men, one man for each tribe." Uh, you see, this whole spy thing is, uh, Elohim's not against it. He's not against it. And the, the guys that they're going to send are not really trained spies, by the way. They are the influential leaders of each tribe, and these are the ones that are sent. Verse 3 of Numbers 13, So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, at the this command of Yahweh, all of them of men Christ. who were heads of the sons of Israel. Now, this is a fairly long trip. I don't know if you ever noticed that or not. But we're looking at upwards around 300 miles one way. Now, that's, that's a pretty good walk in there. And here we have a list of the, uh, of the names here. Verse 4, these then were their names from the tribe of Reuben. Shemua, the son of Zachar, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, this the son of Hori, of from the tribe cast. of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. Um, the man from Ephraim is Hoshea, that's the son of Nun. He's going to be the successor to Moses. And his name will be changed here shortly. Uh, Caleb is also one of the men that are that's sent in to spy on the land. This is a demonstration First of the cast. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gediel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Emiel, the son of Gamali. From the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael. From the tribe of Nephtali, Nabi, the son of Voshi, and from the tribe of Gad, Gul, the son of, of Maki. <clears throat> um, Moses changed the name of, oh, let's hear, look at verse 16 here first. These are the names this of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. Cast. But Moses changed Hoshea, the son of Nun, or called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. And <clears throat> it's not Joshua, though. He actually called him Yehoshua. Okay, the same name as Messiah, which I think is uh, interesting. Hoshea, uh, or Yeshua, means salvation. And the name Yehoshua means Elohim is salvation. Why did he change his name to this? Any thoughts? Why, you know, just, oh, oh, Hoshea, uh, you're going to be this Yehoshua is a now. Demonstration of Why would he do that? I thought that was strange. And years ago, someone brought that up. Uh, brother made a very good point. You know, we're not told why he did this. But it is possible that Moses wanted Yehoshua to be the prophet like Moses. Okay? I think that's what he wanted. In Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 and 19, 
I'll raise up a prophet from among the countrymen like you, and I'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that this I command him. Of it shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he'll speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. So did Moses know more of Messiah than, than we're told in Scripture? That very well could be. Who the prophet like Moses was, and maybe even his name. Yeah. Be declared what? Could be. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, a demonstration of wirecast. I, I, I think that's probably the answer. I think Moses is saying that's the guy. This is the guy. Verses 17, and by the way, he did succeed Moses. So, Verses 17 and 18, when Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, he said to them, Go up there into the Negev, then go up into the hill country, and see what the land is like, whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many. Now, why did they do this? Why did they go spy the land? Why was this necessary? You know, Elohim probably wanted them to see his power once again. He wanted them to demonstrate faithfulness in him. He wanted them to see the overwhelming obstacles they're going to have to overcome to take this land. Uh, people that are stronger and bigger than them and much, much more numerous. Cities that are fortified. He wants them to see all this. <clears throat> um, you know what they were supposed to come back? And, and also, and the people this said, well, I want to see you know, this land of, uh, of milk and honey here, flowing with milk and honey. How great is this land? They got to see that. And if they had just come back and said, you know, everything he said is exactly right. Beautiful place. It flowing with milk and honey. That the, the, the way the, the crops and everything grow there is enormous. This is, this is an incredible place. They didn't come back and say that. But if they'd done that, then they would have been blessed. That's what they were supposed to do with this, uh, with this trip. But they didn't do it. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Verses 19 and 20. And how is the land in which uh, they live? Is it good or bad? And how are the cities in which they live? Are they like open camps or with fortifications? And how is the land? Is it fat or lean? Are there trees in it or not? Make an effort to get some of the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time for, of the first ripe grapes. Mm, excuse me. Now, they were, they were to bring back a report. They were to bring, bring back uh, proof of their findings. And Moses said, be very thorough. Demonstration of Wirecast. Verses 21 and 22. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob at Lebo Hamath. And when they'd gone up into the Negev, they came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Um, so the men went through Hebron. And this is the uh, burial place of this Abraham, by the way. And they knew of that. Cast. In uh, Genesis 23, verse 19, after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field at Machpelah, uh, facing Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Then his sons, in Genesis 25, verses 9 and 10, then his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mach Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, facing Mamre. The field which Abraham, Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth, there Abraham was buried with his wife. This is a demonstration. Now, of Herod Wirecast. built a tomb over the cave where they're buried uh, a long time ago. And Isaac and Jacob are buried there also. And, and these tombs serve as, serve as proof of the pledge of the fulfillment of Elohim's promises. But the spies seem more impressed with the size of the city and its inhabitants then by its relationship to Elohim's promises to them. <clears throat> Verses 23 and 24, Then they came out the valley of Eshcol, this and from there the cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes. They carried it on a pole between two men with some of the pomegranates and the figs. That place was called the valley of Eshcol because of the cluster which the sons of Israel cut down from there. Eshcol, that means cluster. The Valley of Eshcol is still noted there for its grapes. Um, I don't know if you've seen drawings of uh, this event with the spies carrying uh, 
bunch of grapes where the grapes are the size of basketballs and stuff like that. Okay, no. This is a no. demonstration. They were just grapes, but I mean, a cluster was huge. That was the deal. That was the deal. Verses 25 and 26, then they returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days. And they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So these men, they came back to give a report. Uh, actually, this is you know, uh, of Wirecast. where did they go again? 300 miles in the middle of enemy territory. 12 of them. They weren't really spies, okay? They spied out the land, but these are just the leaders. The, essentially, the political leaders of each tribe. Um, you know what? They went 300 miles right through enemy territory, looked at everything, spied through everything, looked at the cities, looked in the cities, and came 300 miles back. Uh, how many of them made it back? This how many? is a demonstration of Wirecast. 12. 12 went in. 12 went back into enemy territory on a 600-mile journey. Okay? What should that tell them right there? Elohim's in control. Okay? That should have been the number one thing it should have told them. It did it all in 40 days. Yeah. <laughs> right? Totally unharmed. You know, no one fell, broke their leg. Nothing. Everything was fine. Verse, verse 27, 28. This is a demonstration. Thus they told him and said, We went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Well, they, they agree. This is what Elohim promised. It's just like he said. Then they get this, this, uh, this thing called doubt kind of, kind of oozes in. They saw the cities were large, heavily fortified, huge walls. Verse 29, Amalek is living in the land of the Negev, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites are living in the hill country, and the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. Okay, they're all enemies of Israel. They all are. Verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we shall surely overcome it. See, Caleb is a strong a man of faithfulness, of and he's not even an Israelite. Okay? He doesn't even come from one of the tribes. He's a Kenizzite. Now, Judah kind of adopted him, and he's leading Judah at this time. But he exhibits his faithfulness. He says, nope, I'm ready to go. Let's get with it. Let's take it, just like the, the father promised. Verse 31, but the men who had gone up with him said, We're not able to go up against the people, for they're too strong for us. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had this spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone, cast. and spying it, spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great size. There was also, we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. We became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Um, okay, they said all the men were bigger than us. Well, they've, uh, where's, uh, where's Israel been the last 400 years? Living in Egypt. Okay, eating spiders and pigs. How big are they going to be? Demonstration of wire Probably not that big. These guys have been uh, living in a prosperous country, flowing with milk and honey and and grapes, and wheat, and barley, and cattle, and sheep. They were huge. They were big men. <clears throat> what was, uh, you know, the, the average height of a man in the Civil War? It was like about 5'4". Why was that? For the same reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, this is a demonstration the sons of a knack here cast. are described as giants. And... Um, it says, we saw the Nephilim. The sons of Anak are part of the, the Nephilim. Now, okay, Nephilim, that's, um, we've gone over this before. We're going to go over it one more time. Nephilim are not giants. The sons of Anak were. They were giants. See, we saw the Nephilim. Sons of Anak are part of Nephilim. Let's take a look at this, uh, 
this Nephilim. And by the way, in, in King James, in New King cast. James, they don't even use the word Nephilim. They just say giants. The Nephilim are giants. <clears throat> the only other time it's used is in Genesis 1. Or excuse me, 6, verse 4. Uh, starting with verse 1 of Genesis 6. Uh, one of the more... What, how do I put this? Um, one of the more difficult passages in Scripture, what some people have said is the most difficult to interpret, and I, uh, I think that's silly, if you just look at it logically. This is in Genesis, this is before the flood, just before the flood. Now, it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them. But the sons of Elohim saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. And Yahweh said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be uh, 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of Elohim came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. This those were the men who were of, of old, men of renown. Okay. Um, to start with, the sons of Elohim are not angels. Okay? Not spirit beings that somehow cohabited with women, whomever they liked. I don't know that spirit beings, I don't think sex is part of a spirit being. Uh, but that's what people want to think, that angels and women had sex here and, and they had giants for uh, This is a demonstration of why I don't know if you've looked at the uh, alleged Nephilim uh, bones pictures on the internet. Have you seen those? Like they'll have a femur that's like this long. All right, that's a Nephilim. But no, it's not. It's, a, it's, it's trick photography. It was mostly done on a, on a, a, a photography contest, okay? So they, they made up these archeological digs and they had skulls in there that were bigger than like this corner here and they just blew things up and uh, they did a good job. But people still look this at that. This is a demonstration you know how of wire Christians cast. and Messianics can be though. <clears throat> I like to take that and run with it. Uh, and that the Nephilim DNA is making a comeback in the world today. That's a sign the Antichrist is right around the corner and just never quits. Okay, The blessings just keep flowing. <laughs> so, uh, to heck with all that. The sons of Elohim and the daughters of men. If you look at Genesis 5 and Genesis 4. In Genesis 4 we have... The genealogy this of Cain. Is a demonstration of okay, he's a bad past. guy. And he had bad people in his genealogy. Then in Genesis 5, we have the, the genealogy of Seth, the good guy, the guy that replaced Abel. Okay? So the daughters of men and the sons of Elohim are really, it, it's uh, sons, uh, daughters of Cain and sons of Seth. Okay? But not that all the sons of Seth were good and all the Daughters of Cain were bad, but that's just, that's just a label for them, all right? And he's saying, uh, one thing you're not allowed to do, and that cast. is to uh, mate, uh, to make a covenant with people who are not part of his chosen, if you are. <coughs> uh, and that's what they did. And their children, they're called Nephilim. The Hebrew word, the root word is nephal, and it means fallen one, all right? If you put an I-M at the end of a word in Hebrew, it, it's plural. So Nephilim, and what they were, they were fallen ones, is what their offspring were. What does Elohim said will happen this if you make a covenant intermarry with cast. people who are unbelievers? What does he say will happen? Well, I want it, it won't work, but what will happen to your children? They'll be lured away by the false gods of the, of the one they're marrying. They'll be... Fallen ones. Okay? That's what it's talking about. That's what that is. <clears throat> now, um, it says the sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim, this are part of the fallen ones. Of and these uh, sons of Anak, they're described as giants. And that's in Deuteronomy 2, verses 9 and 10. And Yahweh said to me, Do not harass Moab nor provoke them to war. For I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the sons of Lot as a possession. The Emim lived there formerly as a people, great, numerous, and tall as the Anakim. Do you notice uh, uh, the sons of Anak? If you put an I-M at the end, what does that tell you? 
plural. This is a demonstration okay. of why our So it's the sons of Anak that are the tall ones. So the other spies, though, were convinced that Elohim could not follow through with his promise. They were convinced he couldn't do it, that he couldn't deliver the people and give them that land. Any questions on any of that? No confidence. Yeah, no confidence. Right. Right. He hasn't done enough to demonstrate who he is and what he can do yet, has he? I mean, just that trip there and back, 300 with 12 guys in, 12 guys out. Of wire cast. And no close calls, not a one, did they discuss. But they didn't look at that and say, whoo, he's going to do everything he said. This is going to be great. No, it didn't do that. They were scared. Okay, let's take a break for about five minutes, and we're going to look at Acts chapters 11 through 13, and they are some of the most important chapters, especially chapter 13, if you want to understand the Brit Hadashah and Paul's letters. You need to know chapter 13. This Very is a important. demonstration of Wirecast. <clears throat>